Hey guys, what's going on? It's ever seen here. Hope everyone's doing well. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing the new update in Rise of the Kings that introduced the L6 castle and T12 troops. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to get them. So for today's video, I'm going to be using Vung's castle. Um, he's my friend in K241, and he's also the king. And he has a max deal L5 with literally everything, so I can show all of the requirements for L6 for every single building. And I just want to give my thoughts on the update and just kind of future things that I think they have planned. Um, as you can see in the pictures here, I'll show you the L6 wall. So you can upgrade to an L6 wall, which makes me think that L7 is going to come and so on and so forth. Uh, we don't know when, hopefully years to come because this already took two years to release anyway. But I know that they have it planned, so if you're going to continue playing this game, you got to keep that in the back of your mind. Um, I really think that this update only catered to L5 players, and that's it. Uh, and I think that every single update in a game should be catered to every single player instead of just one specific group of players that are already way too strong that don't need to be any stronger. Um, I think that T12 is going to be really bad for the game, personally because not only is it going to be really hard to kill, um, we have Mulan now, which is kind of a broken hero in the mix, and T12 Cav are going to be stronger than T11 Cav, and we already see the damages that Mulan's done to everybody. Like, the, she is way too overpowered, and attacking twice in a battle makes no sense to me, because that means that someone gets four, a 30% chance to have four heroes in a fight. And that just makes no sense to me because that's a huge advantage. And just because you spend a little bit of money doesn't mean that you should just stomp people with no question. I also want to talk about how T12 and their role in war is going to be way too weighted compared to T11. And this is what happened when we brought T11 into the game. T10 basically became useless. And I don't think that T11 will become useless, but I think that T12 will become too strong uh, especially when holding buildings alone, uh, just like, you know, if someone fills a throne with all, uh, say, 2.5 million T12 cavalry with Mulan. That is clearly broken, and you will never beat that, especially even if you have a full rally of L6 troops, you're probably not going to beat it. And when somebody has 800% statistics with an all T12 throne, that's ridiculous to me. And the other thing that's ridiculous is that this can be bought by the biggest players in only 10 days. So let's go back to the game here and I'll show you guys the store and where you can actually buy glorious medals now. And I've already done the math for all this just a minute ago. And looking at all the packs that offer glorious medals, you can get 13,000 and a little bit glorious medals a day. So if it only takes 120,000, to get to one troop building, that means that someone can have T12 in as little as 10 days if they decide to maximum spend every day. And you know that the top players in the game are going to do this, and you know just a lot of players in general are going to do this because they've been stuck at L5 for a very long time, and they've probably been waiting for this to splurge all their money on, and now you're going to have people walking around with completely broken tier of troops in as little as 10 days. That, to me, is where the game starts to get more catered towards pay-to-win people. And of course, I knew it was going to happen, I just didn't think it was going to happen this quick. And really now, I think that the player base is going to decline and it's going to be more narrowed because all of the big money players are going to stay and they're going to fight each other and that's how the game develops. So now you can actually see that if you go to the metal exchange, there's now a section to do glorious medals. And this is only for L5 players, of course. And so if you go into it, it'll show you that each time you do an exchange, you'll receive 10 glorious medals. And you can only do 100 times a day. So right now, Vung has done only 19. But if he did the full thing, I'll show you the math to it. But it's 6,750 regular medals uh, to obtain 1,000 glorious medals. So using this trick, um, the big spenders can actually get L6 castle and T12 troops way quicker than even 10 days because 
most of these top tier players, they've been L5 for probably a year. So they've probably got more than 100,000 medals to just buy this every single day. And so that's where it also gets pretty complicating. And when I say that this is so catered to L5 players to just get way stronger than the rest of everybody. So now I'm going to show the troops in comparison with T11 and T12 troops and show the stat differential between both of their base stats. And by looking at the troops, I actually think that Siege is going to make a bit of a comeback, uh, just judging by the amount of attack that they have now. And we haven't had really an attack Siege since, you know, tier 10. So I think that Siege is about to make a comeback. I think that Cavalry is going to be the complete strongest, but that is only because of Mulan. And I actually think that Mulan and Adarin are going to be a very good and deadly combo. And I think for infantry, it's really not for attack, it's more for defending your other troops. So I think infantry is going to be used less in attack now. And I really think that it's going to be more focused on archers, cavalry, and siege, and using uh, T12 infantry to protect your other troops. And I think that archers are still in a good spot, they've been in a good spot. Of course, with using Eritra and Kanoa, you'll be fine. But I think overall, the T12 troops will be good um, against each other, but I think they will be way too strong against all of the other troop levels. So now guys, with all that being said, I want to just take this time to give my personal opinion on where it is we're going to end up here soon. And really, I believe that you know, since T12 is so much more money exponentially to get than it was to get tier 11, I think that now tier 12 is going to be so overpowered like T11 was when it first came out, where you would have one or two people in the Kingdom versus Kingdom. Um, between both kingdoms, maybe one to two people had T11, right? And they filled the throne, and that was basically the war. You couldn't kick it with tier 10 troops. And you basically just lose because this other guy has tier 11 troops. Well, now that T12 is out and it costs significantly way more money to get, that means that we're going to be in a, I would call a slump for so many months where only one guy is going to have T12 troops and that is going to be the decider of the war. And I really think that that just breaks the game. I thought we were in a good spot now where, you know, almost everybody had T11 and wars were specifically waged on skill and it wasn't about the money and so now that this happens it's really disheartening to people like me that don't really spend a lot and of course I've spent a small you know medium sized amount of money and it depends on where you're from how much money I spent is worth to you but I spent a lot of money in my opinion on this game and I'm nowhere near these top people and unless you know, us smaller guys get more offerings to like get these glorious medals and stuff. I really see like us just getting shafted and these L5 players just getting way stronger and just completely breaking the game by, you know, being able to just fill a throne with T12 troops and that is the end of the war. And that's what I don't really like, but it's not really time to jump ship yet. We'll just see how this progresses. Um, I really don't even know what it'll be like in combat yet. But I mean, T11 happened and I kind of already saw what was going to happen. So I really just see a repeat and this just taking way longer to get over. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you know, you learned a little bit about how to get the troops and stuff. Um, it really only applied to L5 players, so that kind of sucks. But my L5 watchers, you know, you can, you can enjoy the information. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.